Hello, this is Michael Osborne with Webucator. In this video, we're going to look at a solution that Chris Klug came up with for uploading files using an ASP.NET Web API. Now, Chris agreed to let us create this video showing his solution, which is available as an article on his blog at the URL shown here. Let's begin by defining what it is we're trying to accomplish. Our goal here is to use a ASP.NET Web API action in order to upload a file. Now, the traditional approach to this problem would be something along the lines of what you see here. You'll notice in this code that what we're doing is we're declaring a path to a folder on the local hard drive. We pass that path to the constructor of a multi-part form data stream provider, and then we pass that provider to the read as multi-part async method of the request content object. Now, this is effective. It will certainly upload the file. But one of the major problems here is the fact that when it uploads the file, it actually saves it on the local hard drive. We really would prefer an approach where we don't have to use local hard drive. And in addition, we don't want to have to take a dependency on the context. So how would we go about approaching that in a different manner? Well, Chris made the observation in his article that although you certainly could use the multi-part form data stream provider, you didn't have to. You could actually call the read as multi-part async method directly without passing in any provider. Now, what this means is you have to do a little more work because you're going to have to sort through the various content objects that come back. But that's really fairly straightforward and simple. So let's take a look at the solution he created. The first thing he did was he built a couple of classes to hold the content objects that we're interested in. Now, again, when the information comes up, you're going to have a lot of different types of content objects. But what we're interested in are fields and files. So Chris first built a couple of classes to encapsulate those items. So the first class you see here is the HTTP posted field class. This class is intended to hold content fields that come out of the collection. You'll notice it's got a simple constructor, receives a name and a value, and then we have two properties, name and value, uh, both of which are publicly readable and privately settable. Now next we have an HTTP posted file class, which is very similar to the HTTP posted field class. Again, we have a simple constructor. It receives a string name, a string file name, and a byte array, which represents the file. Each of these are then exposed as public properties, which are publicly gettable, but privately settable. Okay, so the HTTP posted field and HTTP posted file classes represent pieces of content that we will pull out of the collection when we iterate through all these content objects. But we need some way to kind of contain them. So in addition, we have here an HTTP posted data file, which you'll notice is a very simple little wrapper around two dictionaries. One dictionary contains posted fields. The other dictionary contains the posted files, because these are the two things that we're interested in when we are iterating through the content. And now that we actually have classes to hold the content, let's do something interesting with it. What we do here is we build an extension method. This extends the HTTP content class. And essentially what it does is it first checks the posted or calls the posted content read as multi-part async to return the provider. It then creates two dictionaries, one of type files and one of type fields. It then iterates through the content in the HTTP content collection, and it checks each item. And if the item has a file name, then it is a file. And we do the content read as byte array async to retrieve the information into the file. And we retrieve the file name by calling the content headers content disposition file name with a trim. And then we add that to the files collection. If it does not have a file name, then we assume it is a field, and we await the content read as string async. We store the results into the data, and then we call the fields add method, passing in the field name and the new HTTP posted field with the field name and the data. So what we've done is we created two dictionaries, one of type files and one of type fields. Then we simply return a new instance of the HTTP posted data class, passing the fields and the files to the constructor. 
Now at this point, we've tacked that extension method onto the content class. Now we can simply use it in our code. In our file upload controller, you will notice that what we do is we declare, or I'm sorry, we make a call to the request content parse multipart async. This is that extension method that we built earlier, which will then return that information to us. Then we can check that data that was returned and see if it contains the key file. If it does, we can pull the file out and the file name out. If it contains a key description, we can pull the description out and we can return that message saying, thank you for uploading this file. Now this particular application does not actually do anything with the data. We're just showing you how to access it and how to do something useful with it. So the next part of the puzzle here would be our view. In our index view, we have a very simple Angular JS view and you'll notice in the layout very straightforward we've got a little upload file legend we have a place to enter the username and a place to put in a file name and select it and then we've got an upload file submit button this is then tied to our code which is fairly straightforward we call the upload method which uses the URL API upload the fields is username and the file is the file and then we have a success function and an error function so let's go test out this solution and see how it works. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go back into my extension method and I'm going to put a breakpoint right here where it returns the posted data. This is just so that we can look at the data and see that it's there because again, this application doesn't really do anything with the results. So I'm going to execute this. This will open up my form and in the form, I'm going to put in a username and I'm just going to, I already had one in there, Michael. I'm going to browse and I've got an image in my documents folder called ASP.NET logo. I'm going to open that up and then I'm going to click submit. Now this will take me to my breakpoint and at this point I can now take a look at my fields and you'll notice in my fields I have a single field which is the username and it contains the value Michael. In addition in my files collection you'll notice that I have a single file. That file contains a byte array it's called ASP.NET logo.jpg, and you can actually see there's all the data that's in that byte array. So at this point, I have returned the field and the file from the form. And as I mentioned earlier, this data is contained strictly in memory. At this point, I've saved nothing on the local hard drive. Now, be aware this could become a problem if you're uploading very large files, but generally speaking, when dealing with small files like images, this is a much cleaner, much more elegant solution. All right, I'd like to again thank Chris Klug for the inspiration for this video. Be sure and check out his blog at the URL shown here for other articles related to programming in .NET. That's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it.